Thomas and Aaron. As we gear up for season two, there's something new that we're going to do this year, something that this podcast about the history of Manhattan Island has never done before. And it actually has nothing to do with the island of Manhattan. In fact, it doesn't even have anything to do with history, really, with one exception. What it does have to do with is podcasting. You know, this realm is something that, while I'm getting used to it a bit, is still very new and uncharted for me. And I think that's true of the wider industry as a whole. But as it opens up a bit, I'm starting to see the real true value in it. Because while there's plenty of, you know, commercial commandeering of this medium already, there's a great swath of that. But then there's also, every once in a while, a little gem in this seemingly endless vat of often meaningless and or just uninteresting podcasts. I'm about storytelling, as you might have imagined, and, and that's what I like to hear in podcasting. You know, to each his own. Everybody has their thing. And, and there are some people, some podcasters, who do that very well, but who are blemished, I think, by the mainstream that they have found themselves in or are desperately trying to get themselves in, which is even worse, really. Either way, that mainstream thing is a blessing and a curse. Endless commercials, often at exactly the wrong time, or the professional obligation to kiss up to a certain political narrative, or the obligation to plug other shows that are, well, just being plugged because they've also somehow found themselves onto that same mainstream platform, but not necessarily because they're good. Sometimes they are. And a lot of times they're not. But then, if you look a little further, you can find these little podcast gems that they're just, they're not over the top mainstream. You know, they're not over commercialized. They're, they're not over processed. They're not trying to play it up as some kind of reality show, game show host in order to maximize downloads. What they are is something that is so precious and increasingly rare today. They're real and believable. Well, this year, as we gear up for season two, which is awesome, by the way, I decided I was going to find three of these little gems and share them with you. Just because I think it's a good thing to do. Now, you may know them already, or some of them, None of them are, like, unknown. They've all got good followings, and they've all been doing it a while. In fact, I I believe that two of the three have been doing it longer than I have. But regardless, I'm going to introduce the first one of these to you right now. So I found this podcast literally when I searched the best podcasts you've never heard of. And there were actually a few decent ones on there, but there was only one of them that I attached myself to, or that attached itself to me. And yeah, it was number 22. And yes, it was about ghosts. And maybe it was because I was painting my basement on that cold, darkish Sunday in early, early spring when no one was home and the wind was blowing outside ominously. And there was just some weird energy down there in the solitary world of my big empty basement. And I click on this thing And I hear, and it goes, it goes, and it goes, goes, you can see me in the dark. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And it goes right into this incredible ghost story. And it's just, the concept is so simple. It's just real, so-called real people telling their own first-person ghost stories. But the thing is, they're really good ghost stories. And I knew it was good because I burned through like three episodes before I even batted an eye and looked really closely like, what is this podcast? Well, better than me telling you about it, let's go right to the source. So, Damas and Aaron, for our first coolest off-the-beaten-path podcast recommendation this season... I am very, very excited to introduce the extremely cool, musically adept, and remarkably ghost savvy Melissa Sweezy and Nate Reisman of You Can See Me in the Dark. Mavrao Manir, welcome. Well, thank you so much. What an intro. 
I love that. I'm kind of speechless. Thank you. God, it's yeah. an honor. Well, I'm just sitting here smiling. Good. Your show is awesome. It's so, like I said, it's simple in the best way. It's real people, so to speak. Not, you know, it's not celebrities. It's, it's like real people telling real ghost stories. But they are so good. And they're so compelling. And they're so believable. How'd you guys get started doing this? Well, Nate and I, um, so we, our day job, we work together in a production company in Memphis, Tennessee. So there's a lot of, there's just a lot of busy setting up. And then there's a lot of just sitting around and waiting. And so Nate and I started killing time by just trading ghost stories. Like you do just started telling each other stories. Nate's got some amazing ghost stories. And the more we started doing this, we both realized like, why isn't somebody do like, we should, we should do this. We should do this. So, so we did it. We just started telling each other ghost stories and said, let's just put this out on a podcast and let's see what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's just such a great idea and there's just something so genuine about it, but you gets, I mean, and I imagine now you must have like a real pipeline to these stories coming to you. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a cool, it's a cool place to be because I mean, I'm still always putting out feelers, always, I'm a producer, so I'm always tracking people down and trying to get people to tell stories. But for Nate and I both, like it has to pass what I call like the arm hair test. Like my, the hair has to stand up on my arm when I read it or I hear it. Because if I know I'm scared, I know the listener is gonna be scared. I'm like the skeptic. You know, I'm the skeptic on the show. I've always been a skeptic. So, you know, definitely if a story gets me, it's like front and center. Here we go. Yeah. It, it, now, wait, Nate, you had one on the show, right? I did. Yeah. The first season during our Halloween special, I, I had one uh, that happened, you know, gosh, a long time ago. And currently, which uh, our Patreon members are getting the inside scoop I'm telling a, a, a ghost story series that is currently happening in my house right now, uh, which has been really fun to tell, but also better to live. <laughs> well, it's, it's happening right now? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It is a continuation with a, a ghost and my dog interacting together. So, yeah. So now, the, you guys are from Memphis. That's where you guys are. So Memphis is an older city. I, I've never been to Memphis. T tell me about Memphis. It seems like there's a lot of ghosts down there. Yeah. So Memphis, so Memphis was known back in the day as Mojo City. Um, so there's, there's a lot of history here because it's, we're in the Delta, you know, we're in the heart of the South, the confluence of, you know, the Mississippi River. Um, there is a bloody history here. You know, this city was built up. It's the cotton trade. Um, there was, um, the city was built by slaves, brought in um the city was decimated um from uh yellow fever from slave ships from the mosquitoes that took over and almost we this memphis city lost its charter so many people died and so many people fled the city and the people who stayed by to nurse the sick and protect the people that were here um like the city is just built on all these incredible resilient people but the, the Africans who were here in Memphis, who had, they basically had their religions from Africa and there was, there was Catholicism, there was voodoo um, and it became what's known as Mojo. So down on Beale Street, um, which was the African-American heart of trade and commerce in the city, um, that's where they would go to um, work out love spells and success spells and you could go to um, basically mojo practitioners you'd find on beale street so there's a lot of magic um and there's a lot of ghosts there's so much history here so it almost sounds like new orleans yes or, or charleston mm -hmm. something like that very much so i think very much a, a sister city with new orleans for wow. sure oh, yeah I, I can't wait to go there. I, you guys have totally turned me on to all these ghost stories, but also to Memphis. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. I had no idea. I got to get down there. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah it's Memphis a special place. Awesome. Yes, it's so great. 
and and, and the, the 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 hair on your arm test or whatever you call that the hair in the back of your neck test <laughs> mm-hmm. that's what got me about your show right from right from episode one i just you know you, you listen to i've listened to you know oodles oodles thousands of podcasts at this point and when they become just like background noise i'm like i can't do it I, you know i have to work to listen to it yours hooked me right in i'm like what what and it's and it was actually a funeral home in new york right the first episode was that was i on the first one that was i think that was that was our first season it wasn't the first episode okay. but i love that that's the one that you found it's the first one i listen i'm like wait these kids from memphis and this like New York City funeral home, and I'm trying. I thought I knew which one it was. I'm trying to figure it out, but it was a great story. Yeah, she was incredible. Like Nate and I both, like we we knew that there were so many stories here in Memphis we wanted to tell, but we always had plans for bigger, um, and to be able to go outside the city. And and now we've got we've you know we talked to a goth metal singer in in the netherlands and we've got a band that had a story in italy um we've got stories from around the world well let's talk about dan brooklyn because he's that one they were all good because i listened to the whole thing but i think that was the most recent one was dan brooklyn the most recent yeah, one yeah that was the yeah. most recent one that came out um last month well okay let me tell you when he goes when he goes do you mind turning off that candle? Or what, what was the line? That was it. That was that it. Was yeah. Is that what he said? Yeah. Do you yes. yeah. mind turning off those candles? They bother me. I was like, oh, my God. Like, you can't make that up. That There's no way Dan Brooklyn made that up. He Like, that happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I love about it is because it, it comes off so real because – these people are right there that that was said to him. And he's like, I have to repeat this. Yeah. Oh my God. The other one was I re-listened to was the, the gal telling the one about the slender man. And that one was interesting because there wasn't just a, a really cool ghost story, believable, scary ghost story, but there was like a moral message in there. And at the end of that, st- that episode, like she's, She's had like a life lesson. She's almost imparted a life lesson on she couldn't, you know, she couldn't hold those negative feelings inside anymore. And she had to learn to be more positive and that negative, whatever spirit d- detached itself from her. Yeah. It's always a bonus when like, it's not, I think that's another thing when you said like kind of what passes the test for us, because we want a ghost story, but we also want one where there is, you're not always going to get a tidy wrap up because it's a true story and true stories typically don't have that neat tidy ending. But when someone can have some reflection and say, I think this is what it was, or this is how I feel about it now. Like that's when I feel like we have a home run because for our listeners, there's just this sense of, I went on this journey and it may not have gone the way that I thought, but this is how this is how I'm going to think about it now. And yeah, that's the I think our stories have to kind of pass those tests for it to to make it on the show. Well, that was like a bonus, you know. And I was like, wow, that's really that's a beautiful tale. The end of that is this scary Slender Man thing, and then at the end, she learns how to live a better life as a result of it. I was just like, that was fabulous. So. That's great, guys. What what's what's uh, what what do I have to look forward to? Because uh, I've run through all your episodes. <laughs> oh my god, our this season is blowing my mind. We have um, the the next episode up, and I've talked about this. Like I've shared this on Instagram a lot. The next story is a guy out of Bristol um, who grew up in what sounds like the most haunted house in the world, if not Bristol. He spent the first seventeen years of his life in this incredibly haunted house. And while he was telling me the story, I had to ask him to stop so I could put on a sweater and make an extra cup of coffee because I was freezing from the chills that I was getting. (laughs) It's so spooky um, because it's, it's not just a creepy ghost story. And I'm not, I'm not spoiling anything to say this, that to me, what was so scary about it is that there were three children in this house that we're all going through a completely separate ghost story 
each person was living their own different ghost story with their own different ghosts. And no one was talking to, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Nobody was talking to each other until they were older, when they were able to finally compare stories. Cause I think they were so terrified that they all just kept it to themselves. And I think that's kind of what's heartbreaking about it is that maybe had they shared this with each other earlier, maybe they would have found some comfort um, because each of these three kids just kind of had to live through this nightmare on their own. So Bristol, England. Yeah. 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 Well, so you guys are really taking it on the road now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so awesome. We've got two really out of excited. England and we have the Netherlands. Yeah. We've got Italy. Um, yeah. We've got a lot of, and we've been back to Tennessee. We've got some more Tennessee stories coming. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. There's some great ghosts in Charleston. Have you done any in Charleston yet? No, but you've just put yeah. that out into the ether. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's going to happen. That's how it works. Yeah, you say definitely. something and then it just shows up. It manifests yeah. that way. Awesome. Well, great work guys. Keep it up. I, I, as I said, I can't recommend their show enough. It is. You can see me in the dark, Melissa Sweezy and Nate Reisman, super cool kids from the production world. So they really know what they're doing and they find incredible ghost stories and you can find them anywhere. They're, you're everywhere, right? You're on Spotify, Apple, all of everything. You have Patreon now. Yep. We have a Patreon. <laughs> Patreons, you can see me in the dark and anywhere you want to listen to a podcast, we're on it. I'm Melissa Sweezy. And I'm Nate Reisman, and this is You Can See Me in the Dark. You can see me in the dark. Check it out, guys. You will not be disappointed.